All right, this is one last midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. So last week, System Era put out Astroneer Jet Powered Update, and it introduced two really cool new vehicles to the game, along with a bunch of other interesting changes that have happened to Astroneer. So hold on tight, because in this video, we're going to go through everything that's included in the new update. First off, the new vehicles. Well, you're probably wondering uh, if you're going through your research catalog, where the heck are the new vehicles? Well, the new vehicles are not accessible through the research catalog. They're accessible only through the missions. Well, at least currently. If you haven't done any missions, don't worry. If you have an old save, uh, the, some of, a lot of the missions actually will automatically unlock for you. But in order to unlock the missions for the new items, you're going to need to do two parts unknown, which is print a small shuttle, print and install an oxygenator in the shuttle, and print and attach a solid fuel thruster. Like I said, if you have an old save and you are just getting into missions for the first time, getting to the parts unknown mission is not that difficult and will take you probably only about 10 or 15 minutes to unlock. Once you do, you'll get a new mission called Prototype Recovery, which tells you to go to DeSolo and find a data recorder and explode it to get a new item called an exochip. Exochips are a new resource inside of Astroneer and are actually used in several recipes. So there has been a big recipe change and you can see the items listed here take exochips. Luckily, exochips are found all over the place inside of exocaches on every new and old save. So if you have an old save, all you have to do is load it up and this exocache will appear. You can easily find them by opening up your compass and they are indicated by a little green symbol in your compass. In order to open up the exocache, you're gonna need dynamite. Luckily, System Error, when thinking about this feature, has added dynamite more abundantly into the game. So you will find dynamite inside of down spaceships or uh, just running around more frequently. So don't worry if you don't have dynamite unlocked or even if you haven't made an atmosphere condenser that's gathering sulfur on Kalidor or Novus because you can find dynamite pretty abundantly laying around. Once you explode the exocache, it should give you anywhere from one to three exochips inside. There is a new feature added to dynamite. So when you're detonating dynamite, you can see that there's an indicator now. It's telling you when it's going to explode. And this is the new exochip. And don't be too concerned if you don't have dynamite right away because if you happen to have a packager, you can actually package up these exocaches and take them with you. Now they are a T2 item, so you're going to have to have something that carries around T2 items, but at least you can carry the exocache to a location and store it somewhere until you have the appropriate dynamite to explode it. And it exploded. Once you're ready to start the prototype recovery, this is going to lead you down a chain of missions that will unlock the two new vehicles. When you're going to go to DeSolo, I highly recommend either taking some sort of vehicle with you or some sort of jetpack with you because you're going to need to find a specific exocache to explode. Luckily, when you go to DeSolo and then later Visania, they actually tell you the location of which exocache you need to destroy or there's something else that you need to find later. But they highlight it with a little new icon. Now, luckily, I have a landing spot right next to it and let's go down. Like I said earlier, you don't need to worry too much about dynamite because dynamite, when you go to these specific mission locations is usually readily available for you to use. So blowing up the mission objective, which is a vehicle data recorder, is rather simple because like I said, dynamite is available to you. Remember to take the exo chip after you blow up the data recorder and be sure to go back to a landing pad so you can turn in the prototype recovery mission. 
When you do, you should get a new mission called Tracing the Transmission that tells you to find Matt on DeSolo and slot an exochip inside of Matt. Like the data recorder, Matt is also indicated with a little new icon that tells you where to go to complete the mission. These mission icons are also represented inside of your compass as a little light bulb with some little glowing stuff around it. When you find Matt, you're going to need to slot in an exochip as part of the mission. And your mission will complete and give you another new mission which tells you to bring items back to Matt in electrical engineering and ingredient investigation in order to get the recipe to unlock the hoverboard. When you unlock the hoverboard and you actually get it, it sits in your backpack and you can activate it by using a double tap. Now it requires one power unit per second in order to use it, but it is a very, very cool vehicle and extremely fast. It also can be used in conjunction with the jetpack to give you a wild ride and experience. So make sure that you play with this one because I think you guys will enjoy it. It's a lot of fun to play with. I'm here on Visania and I'm not gonna spoil the rest of the mission sequence for you. But once you complete Visania, you unlock the second vehicle. The second new vehicle is called a VTOL. It is a lightweight aircraft that is capable of a vertical takeoff and landing. It does require hydrazine in order for it to run, but once you do, taking off is easy and it allows you to hover in place. This vehicle is great for scouting missions. It allows you to run around without having to worry about crashing or holding on to any kind of button to be able to scout. And it does have enough space in order for you to be able to pick up things like extra power or research or anything along those lines that you might come across that take a tier two slot. In the trailer, you saw the VTOL shoot off some rockets in order to perform some sort of explosion on the ground. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that way in reality. So don't expect your VTOL to be some shooting ship because it is not. The VTOL also has an indicator when you're within a safe landing range, which appears when you get close enough to the surface. So if you double tap your shift button, it will automatically land at that location. Also, another interesting thing to note is if you're high enough, the VTOL will actually bump into like a second speed in order for you to go faster. Another change that has been made to the game is they've added the leveling block into the adventure mode. It takes 500 bytes to unlock. It's printed in your backpack and requires one full soil canister to build. And the leveling block has 10 uses and then you're required to build another one. So for those of you that have a desire to get a flat surface, the leveling block is there for you to use. Another neat addition into the game is thruster tooltips have changed and it tells you actually how much fuel is remaining in your ship and the total number of launches that is remaining in the thruster. This is really useful information, especially for those that are just leaving the planet and don't know how much fuel is left or how many launches they can take with a thruster on their ship. I'm really happy that they added this little additional information into the game because it makes it so much easier to plan out your launches. With this update, there's also a new limited time event. It's called Automated Mass Production Protocol and will require several resources in order for you to complete it. Luckily, Warfrat on our Discord channel has added a save to the save share folders that helps you expedite this process. While it's not 100% complete and you will need to do a little bit of work, all the resources are available for you in order to complete the limited time event without having to do too, too much work. So thanks for Warfrat for posting that save file into the shared save folder to help us along and complete the automated mass production protocol. The limited time event unlocks several items. Now, the automated mass production protocol has actually been run before, and so there was a previous bundle that was available to you, but they give it to you in this limited time event. And one of those items is the Metal Gear Visor. 
Also, you get the GearHead hat and VR Vision, which is under masks. For completing this limited time event, you also get an additional palette called Copper Plate and a new mask called Cog Piece. Another change that has been made into the game has been debris and scrap adjustments. So you'll find now large station debris and they'll be more diverse as well. You'll find these little bits of scrap or, or you'll also find packengers, dynamite. I'm in the, you see a wide variety of items now in the debris field, which is pretty exciting. On top of that, they've also changed the value of debris in general and have increased it universally. And if you're into cosmetics, the Exo Outfitter store has gotten an update as well. The uh, Pride Visor Bundle is free, so if you want that, you can just easily download it. They've also added the Tough Suit and uh, an on-grid palette. There's several, several new items, new emotes like Gun Show or Imagine. New hats like the Headlight Lamp and Long Haul Hat, as well as new masks and new palettes. There's other new improvements that have been added to the game. I showed you the dynamite, but also the narrow mod deformation speed has been reduced to make it more easily to use with the leveling block. The wanderer probes can no longer be winched. Light position on seats have been adjusted to increase visibility. It's now easier to stop sliding when moving backwards. And then also sliding is less likely to occur on down gentle slopes. On top of that, System Error has fixed a slew of defects. This is probably one of the largest defect fixes that I've seen. It's a huge number of defects that have been fixed. So hopefully if you've had some sort of issue, one of these issues, it will be resolved for you with the current update. And then finally, Ashenir merchandise has added some new items. There's some new shirts, a hat and a new pin, which you can get by going to the official Ashenir store. All right, well, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked this update. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Would love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below. And make sure to hit that notification bell. That way you know when I go live and when I post new videos. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.